In this final movie on the Steady State Fate Ultra Random Analog, I want to show you a couple tricks you can do with this internal clock. Not only does it go up to audio rate, it also has an external control voltage input, the clock FM, and that follows a 1 volt per octave signal. So you can actually think about using this as a second oscillator. So I'm going to grab an extra copy of my keyboard's voltage from my buffered mult, bring it over to that clock FM, then take a copy of this clock pulse output, run it up to my external audio input on the Moog. This is the internal oscillator. And this is the ultra random analog, which is tuned down way too far right now. But we can bring it up in pitch, get it into audio range, listen to the two together, and tune them against each other. Now there is no fine tune on this, and it covers quite a wide range, so it can be a bit touchy. look at just its output, its harmonic spectra does show the odd harmonics you would expect, plus a lot of even harmonics. Mix the mode back in, bring in some filter, crank up the filter depth, So in a pinch, you do have a second oscillator. Now again, it is very tricky to tune. And I have it in its lower range, red right now. If I go to the green, it's even higher pitch, which goes supersonic. It does take some patience to get these in tune. If you do want to do quick octave offsets, this is where I recommend using a precision adder, a module I talk about quite a bit, to add and subtract whole one volt intervals from the control voltage to do those quick octave switches. Now, a disting in mode 1A is a precision adder. So I'll take my output, my buffered molt, run it into X, which is usually the main input on a disting. Take my output for the ultra random analog from A. Now I've got an octave switch on the Z control. Pretty cool. In addition to having the clock output, you can take the sample and hold output, which normally has noise as an input, and have a pitched noise source rather than a square wave. So let's take this audio output, from my sample and hold instead, and turn the mix to external, bring up the filter, bring up the noise level. Maybe go to a higher tuning here. Mix in some moe. Now we just have a bit of noisiness to this pitch. And I can offset it. Different timbre to play with. Now the last trick I have here, I actually stole from Div Kid Ben Wilson, a good friend of mine. He pointed out that the sample and hold actually works as an analog to digital, then digital to analog conversion again. It's sampling an input, now putting a voltage at an interval defined by that clock rate. That means you could use this as a, say, sample rate reducer to go ahead and decimate the sound of your synth. So let me do a little bit of repatching here. I'm going to leave the volt proctive tracking in in case I want to play around with that. But instead, I'm going to take the audio output from the Moog, run that into the sample input A, it's up here in the corner, then take that output from sample A and run it to my audio output. Now let's hear what sample and hold sound like at audio rate. You need to tune it to taste. And because I'm using the volt proctive input for that clock, 
I can have it track the keyboard. Or I can pull that output. Get all sorts of beat frequencies between the pitch of the oscillator coming out of the Moog and the sample rate of my decimator that I patched here. In fact, let's have some fun. Put that underneath the mod wheel. There's clock FM. High sample rate is actually pretty clean. I destroy with sample rate reduction. So the Ultra Random Analog is indeed a very flexible module. It's not just a Buchla clone of the source of uncertainty. It's not just a couple of sample and holds. You can do a bunch of other things, such as generate random gates, smooth out or add randomness to any signal you have going through it, and also do other things, such as even act as a second oscillator and do sample rate reduction. You can understand why so many people have this as a cornerstone of their racks.